My name is Dom, or as my Bible kids like to call me, Mr. Dom, and it was my absolute honor and privilege to be the Bible room teacher for the VBS this week. And you know, Jesus talks about having faith like a child, and I think as adults we kind of logically know what that means, but it is a whole nother thing to see it in real life, to see the eagerness and the passion and the love to interact and engage with the word, it's truly beautiful. It's something to behold, and it's something we should aspire to. And I got to see it all week. I loved the excitement. I loved the energy, and we're doing a treasure hunt this week. Who wouldn't be excited on a treasure hunt? You know, even at five years old, a five-year-old doesn't know what GDP is or economics or how money works, but they know that treasure has value. Even at that young of an age, they know that we are searching for something that is valuable. And there's an excitement and there's an anticipation that comes with striving for something that we know is going to be worth it. And the treasure we were hunting this week isn't just any treasure. It's not silver, it's not gold, it's not stocks. It is eternal life in a perfect place with a perfect God. And it's beautiful. So to illustrate that, this week, we had this little bag of treasure. And what we did is every single day before we got started with the Bible lesson, there was some sort of challenge or some sort of game. And what they were trying to do is get the treasure, seek the treasure. It's a treasure hunt. So, you know, there, there, was a, there was a few of them, but my absolute favorite was probably the very first one we did when the kids first came downstairs on Monday morning. What we did is we completely blacked out the room, completely pitch black, turned out all the lights, and we gave, these ki we gave the kids these glow necklaces because we don't want them bumping into each other in the dark, you know, no bonked heads, that doesn't sound very fun. And we hid this bag of treasure somewhere in that darkened room and the kids had to crawl around on their hands and knees trying to find the treasure. And first of all, it was just a really cool visual, seeing all these kids, all the glow sticks in the dark, just going this way and that and bouncing around, looking for the treasure. The problem is, is it's dark, and the bag of treasure is small, and the room is rather big. And so it's really hard to find something that you can't see. And it was only when we found a flashlight that we were able to actually see in the darkness and find the treasure. And like I said, it was a really awesome visual, but it really, really drives home the fact that this world can be a really dark place. It can be scary and it can be confusing and it can be lonely. And so, like we, and like we said, like, there were tw over 20 towns that were represented at VBS this week. What that means is that there are a lot of kids that came to VBS this week that were potentially living in darkness, that are potentially stumbling around in the dark, scary, lonely place, trying to figure out what is valuable, where is the valuable thing. And for those kids specifically, what I wanted to impress upon them is it doesn't have to be like this. There is a light. We call it the Bible. There is a treasure, and you can find it. All you have to do is open it up and turn the, turn the light on. That was just one of the cool things we did to try to get to the treasure. We tried to break into, bo into locked boxes. We played the floor is lava. There was a whole bunch of things. And every day, every day the challenge shed light on how we search for the treasure. We learned about how there are people in the Bible who are also trying to find the treasure. And if we follow in their footsteps, we will journey our way towards it. We talked about how, the, uh, how there's a gap between us and the treasure, but the cross that Jesus died on bridges that gap so that we can walk across and reach it. And finally, we even talked about how the Holy Spirit is a piece of the treasure, the piece of this eternal life that we have waiting for us in heaven that comes to us and fills our hearts with life and life abundantly. And, but throughout the week, there was this one additional theme that I kept noticing kept popping up over and over again, and it wasn't intentional, but it was something truly impactful, and I really hope the kids remember it, is we talked about the promises of God. And guys, what do we know about the promises of God? 
He always keeps them. That's right. Absolutely. God always keeps his promises. And he promises some crazy things. Like someday we're going to die, but we're going to walk back out of our own graves just like Jesus did. That's crazy. There's this treasure that I can't see, but it's worth more than anything else in the world. That's crazy. But God always keeps his promises. No matter how crazy, no matter how impossible they seem, God always keeps his promises. And that's a theme that I really hope and pray these kids take with them. You know, it's God promises that you will never be alone. He promises that you'll never have to be afraid. He promises that he loves you and he's waiting for you and he's got a treasure waiting for you and all you have to do is believe. So as these kids go out into their schools, into their homes, into their family lives, into all these different things, my only hope and prayer is that they remember those words, God always keeps his promises. So to wrap things up, To wrap things up, I'd like to speak to the parents for just a second. You know, at the end of the week, it'd be kind of mean to the kids if we said, no treasure for you. So we gave them each a little bag of this treasure right here. And I know this is probably going to come as a shock to most of you, but I don't actually have piles of silver and gold nuggets just laying around in my basement. These are just some rocks that I found and I painted. Like, let's be honest here. But when I look at these, I can't, help but think, I can't help but think about what the Bible says about storing up treasures in heaven. You know, we as parents, as adults, we have so many things that God has given us that do truly have value. And they are good things. You know, like our 401ks and our stocks, our houses and our mortgages, our cars, trying to keep the house clean, trying to keep things organized, get here, there, and everywhere. These are all good things that God has given us. And hallelujah for them. But when we compare them to what we have waiting for us in heaven, when we compare them to the things of God, they start to look a lot more like painted rocks. So two things I want to say, and then I'll close. The first one is specifically for the parents is, you know, I had your kids for one week this year, and they are awesome kids. I cannot think of a single one that I didn't like, which for young children is really saying something. (laughs) They were all awesome. They were all very well behaved. I loved every single one of them. But I only had them for one week out of the year. There's 51 other weeks. And yes, we are here on Sundays, but that still leaves six days out of the week that it's up to you for. We are only here to help you, but you guys investing the time, you guys teaching your children, raising them up in the way they should go, that is how growth and life and change happens. So I want to encourage you to invest time, set the example, and really instill in them the values that they will lean on forever. And the second one is for all of us, whether you're a parent or a grandparent or neither, is I just want to get in... I just want to encourage you to get involved in our community outreach programs. I want to finish off by sharing a quick personal story is my wife and my family and I were between churches a couple years ago until one of our friends said, hey, I heard we went to this little event called Extravaganza at Valley Bible and we're going to go check it out Sunday. Do you guys want to come with us? And we said yes. A couple years later, here we are. Because a community outreach event reached people that didn't even attend it. Isn't that crazy? (laughs) These things have value. These things, when we get involved in these, we are storing up our treasures in heaven. So as these community outreach events come up, I just really want to encourage you guys to get involved. Because there truly is nothing else that matters. Everything else is painted rocks. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we pray that you help us to remember that you always keep your promises. We pray that as we go to our schools and our homes and we hang out with our parents, that you just help us to hold on to you and hold on to that little piece of the treasure you gave to us in the Holy Spirit. God, I pray for these kids throughout this entire next year until VBS comes again, that you guide them, love them, watch them, and protect them. And God, please bring them closer and closer and closer to you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Dom. Oh, my gosh. Preach it, brother.
Oh my gosh, that's so good. Wow. Just pardon me while I edit my message, because he just gave it. So, I know I, I think, uh, so grateful for our team, and what a beautiful group of people. I just have a couple things I want to add to that, just to reinforce really everything that he just said. And so, I again want to thank those who... Uh, who are part of this, those you're wearing or not wearing, well, you know you were engaged in this, and parents, way to go bringing your kids in. So well, why do we do family ministry here at Valley Bible Church? That's the question I'm just going to pitch before us. Why do we do this? I don't think I really need a lot of help answering that question, but I'm going to provide you why I think God has pressed it on our hearts as a church to do family ministry. And uh, part of it is that God tells us so in his Bible. I'm just going to share a few verses with you. Psalm 71, verse 18. So even to, old, even to uh, old age and gray hairs. I love this one. Even to old age and gray hairs, O God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those to come. And I love that. Being a multi-generational church... And we witness during this week the power of that uh, dynamic of mentoring. Psalm 102.18 says, Let this be recorded for a generation to come, so that people yet to be created may praise the Lord. That's vision. I don't know about you, but I was blessed to have some uh, parents and grandparents who prayed for me and for others who, before I was even born. And, uh, and so I'm so grateful. And some of you have had that blessing as well. And you can do that even right now. Uh, a few weeks ago, we were looking at Psalm 22 in prayer school. And uh, the psalmist David was moved to prayer out of despair. But in the midst of that psalm, God opened up his grace and gave him a vision of his love for him then in that moment but with images of Christ that would come, a forecast of a vision of hope, even in the moment of despair, came to him. And it went beyond this moment, it went beyond Israel, but a hope to the nations, not only that, a hope to the generations. Listen to what it says in Psalm twenty-two thirty: It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. Such a vision that God has given to us. Earlier, uh, Gerard shared from Deuteronomy chapter 6, a famous passage. It kind of set our heart for worship today, right? You've heard it. Let me talk us through just a moment. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on, the, on your hand and they shall be frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and your gates. What does this passage teach to us? So much. If we had the rest of the day during a st storm, I'd, I'd, I'd share it with you. But let me just highlight the highlights. The word here is the Shema. That's the word. This is what the Israel would actually refer to this as the Shema. Shema means hear, listen, hear. Are you hearing what God has, has even said to us today? Hear. Hear, O Israel. To hear what? Who the Lord is. The Lord is your God. The Lord is one God. And that was an important message, for they lived in a land filled with all kinds of other gods, and so do we. But church, the Lord is our God, and he is one God, and he's our God, and he's so much better than painted rocks. I love that. Who is the Lord? How should you relate to him? Love him with everything you have. Love him with your whole heart. Man, such a check. And one of the reasons we gather together is to kind of check do, a, do a, a spiritual EKG on every one of us. How's our love? Where are our loves? How are they ordered in our life? Are we doing this not just on Sunday? Are we doing this not just in the time of singing? Are we doing this with our whole being, everything we have, all that we have and all that we've been given? Love God with everything we have. 
And you know what it also tells us is that God shows us who he is. He reveals himself to us through his word, through, through families in the course of everyday life. That's right. We'll talk about that in a second. With purpose and intentionality, one generation to the next. This is why we do family ministry here at Valley Bible Church. You know, this command in Deuteronomy first comes to the families. God created families. And you know what? This is a messy world, and not only every family has its messiness. Can I get an amen on that? And the, oh, okay, that's right. I hear you. And uh, that's right. It's, it is messy. We're broken people. We need Jesus right in our homes and in our hearts. This command comes first to parents. And parents, let me just say and add to what Dom has shared with you, to you. God wants to establish and for you to hear that he is your God. And he wants to be established in your hearts. I'm reminded when I travel on a plane, they tell you, even though it's all background while they're saying it, but when that oxygen uh, mask has to come down, which you hope that it doesn't, I know we got some Pratt people in here, they hope it never does. But you know what? When that does, they say, put it on you first. And you know you will equip your kids with Jesus as you are rooted in him. You can do it all at the same time, but don't forget, this is for you. And as you're rooted in him, you will strengthen your kids. They'll be watching what you do, how you, how you walk and what you do. And I know that's super scary. And there's grace for all of us because there's no perfect parent in this world except for God, right? He is the perfect heavenly father. Secondly, don't overthink it. It's simpler than we often make it. It's simpler than we often make it. And, and uh, in fact, I have a couple, couple resources I would want to give to you. Uh, if, uh, one, if you don't have a Bible as a family, if you, if you want a kid's Bible, which may be the place where you want to start just walking with your kids through what the Bible says, we have plenty of those for you just to start reading that. Just pick a time and just do it. It might not feel right. You not have, might not have all the candles lit or the mood isn't right or somebody's screaming for something and somebody wants uh, a Rice Krispie cake in the middle of you saying something hugely theological, right? But that's okay. You just keep being faithful. Don't worry about it. It's all good. You never know what God... The kids are amazing. Even in the midst of their cry, they hear things and they see things and things get into their hearts. Keep sowing the seeds. And by the way, don't, don't forget you're not alone. When we do this and obey God in the midst of this, he's doing things. He, he's saying, keep doing it, keep doing it. I'm doing great work that you'll never see uh, in my doing. But the fruit will come from him because God gives the growth. S finally, don't, oh, not finally, I got a couple things to share. Okay, don't do it alone. You know, I've said this a couple weeks ago. For, uh, parents, don't do it alone. Find, I, I've encouraged you to find at least five other adults that you trust that would allow you and come alongside you and sow and reinforce the good news of what Jesus is saying in his book to help you and your kids grow. I would encourage you, youth ministry does not require on whoever is hired on staff and whatever is going on. It, it, it's, remember, it comes to you. Find some help. Finally, you do this in the midst of a context of church. That passage in Deuteronomy was given in the context to, to families who are living in community. And this is what the church is about. Parents, hopefully you're in this community called the church. The New Testament gave a lot of pictures of what the church looks like. It was a, you know, a, 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 a picture of marriage where Jesus is the uh, head of the Oh, that's another one. Uh, Jesus is the, the, the groom and the church is the bride. There's another term. Uh, we, we're the body of Christ. Jesus is the head of his church. And we are many members. And uh, you might be just a, a, a pinky fingernail. Or you might be an arm. Whatever it is, uh, God has given you. But he also says we're a household, a family. So I'm talking with people who are single parents who are singles, who are widowed, who are whoever you are, you are a part of a family uh, called the church. And I, I watched this and even heard of several of you share what a value it was to be in ministry this week to, to experience the, uh, the cross-pollination uh, between generations because we're a household and a family of God. 
And friends, finally, uh, we are here. Why do we do family ministry? Because we want to come alongside you and help you grow, equip you as parents, equip you and your kids in this, in the midst of this journey. And the fact of the matter is we do family ministry because we are, in fact, living in a dark world. And maybe we just all need those, those uh, glow-in-the-dark bracelets. And, uh, and the fact of the matter is that glow-in-the-dark bracelet is, is, uh, is Jesus. And uh, he wants uh, to be not just around your neck. He wants to be in your heart, changing you and using you and I in all the communities in which we live so that those others who are in the dark can, um, can see a light and find the greatest treasure. We began this week praying not only for Vacation Bible School, but we were praying for someone who is missing. And nothing brings you to your knees faster when you're praying for someone who's missing. We live in a broken world, friends. And um, if your loves are not ordered rightly, it's things like that that kind of like tune our hearts to what's most important and the battle that we face. But the good news is we have a Savior who reigns victoriously, and he is the hope of the world. Amen? Amen.